The Dogman Story, Howard Hainzel In memory of Howard Hainzel Sir Howard Hainzel was born in Chicago on April 30, 1914. He was raised on the South Side, where beach soccer games filled his days. There were no referees around to officiate the match. And every time there was a little argument, or when someone got a good kick in the nose, the games ended in a fight. Of course it was difficult, but it was considered a lot of fun back then. In Chicago in 1923, when Howard HNZL was nine years old, Howard's first introduction to the pit bull took place. As he ran through the neighborhood, with a dog of the breed, Airedale, at his feet, an old pit bull, expelled him. Back then, in Chicago's backyards, there were Red Considine, the Farmer Brothers, and the late Ryan. The pit bull was a very popular dog. The first dog, from HNZL, was donated to him by a neighbor. It was a brindle bitch, which he named June. His breeding was not known, as many of these guys never kept their pedigrees up to date. They could, tell you how they were created, just from memory. They preferred to keep their pedigrees, well guarded. And they didn't put them in black and white. I remember that Howard Hensel spent many hours traveling through all cities. He traveled, just to weigh and walk, with the deceased's dogs, Ryan. Howard moved to Arizona in 1939, he took in two female Colby dogs, Penny and Pooch, and a female dog named Monkey. She was a bitch, lemon and white, and she was a bitch bred in line, on Bruce's dog Jerry, with one of his daughters. Howard remembered that nobody had dogs around here back then. A while later, Wiz Hubbard got some dogs. And he also had dogs, raised by the old family, Mr. Feely. Howard Hensel's dog breeding has become a hobby. Paper and pen made him a close friend of many dogmans. After writing to Earl Tudor for quite some time, Howard's first visit, to meet Earl Tudor, was in the year 1942. When he went back east, to buy a new truck. This meeting resulted in a quick friendship. Howard claimed Earl Tudor was the best dogman that ever lived. And the best, as long as it was, in dogfighting. He put more dogs to fight in one year than Armitage did in his entire career. People were talking about me sending him these Arizona bred dogs. But he was the breeder of the dog Bruce's Jerry. The dog that sired all of Arizona's dogs, and is the key dog, in all of these pedigrees. This was the Tudor Turk. His close association with John P. Colby began as soon as he spent two weeks with him in 1936. Howard once said, that with Mr. Colby, living in a blue, law state. It was difficult to hold many fights as they had to keep it a secret. He had to fight in private, and with little publicity. Most people think he just bred and sold his dogs. But he rolled the dogs, harder than most people did in a fight. Colby was quite the sport. Howard Hensel bred a white female dog named Duchess. He claimed to be one of his best bitches. She was the daughter of Patsy, a litter sister of Bambi. He considers that the old dog Peter, was his best sire. Peter was Mr. Colby's former domestic dog in Congo littermaid of Mr. Neblet. He was the father of Mr. Hainzel's dog Musty, among others. In addition to word of mouth, which is often inaccurate. There were old publications, which were, a treasure trove of knowledge. Mr. Howard's dogs were always there in fighting, like those dogs in Arizona. You could tell by what was written and said about him. 
that those dogs was always present in their breeding program. In the 60s, Sir Earl Tudor had written a printed letter to an old magazine. And it said like this. I've noticed a lot of conversations about breeding lately and they're talking about Colby a lot. Well, I think John P. Colby bred more good dogs than any man, but who has the old bloodline now? I've had them all, and I will say their dogs were the best. Now, there's a man doing just as well as Colby. It would be none other than Howard Hainzel from Arizona. I was almost out of dogs, but he took pity on me and gave me the old dog Debois. And now, I have nothing in my yard but Debois dogs. Earl Tudor, he was a legend, and he never gave credit to anyone he didn't deserve. Many at the time said Mr. Howard and Earl were a team to be reckoned with. It was things like that that kept me interested in Howard Hainzel's dogs, and also their genetic background. Howard was a walking encyclopedia of his big-time dogs. And it's sad, but many stories, of some of the best dogs of the time, have been lost. Except for some letters, and also memories, from some people, who knew Howard Hainzel. Mr. Howard's fantastic memory for his dog's pedigrees was only surpassed by his performance. He put hundreds of dogs, in the hands of those who would do them justice, and without changing hands, for not a penny. Many winners of major competitions have emerged from all over the country. A Hainzel dog generally had superior body conformation and had great wrestling skills. Mr. Howard Hensel was also known as a good feeder of puppies. He ate a careful and prepared diet. It took two hours to prepare in her tack room outside the house. While he prepared it, he watched a talk show on TV. Sir Howard was also known as a knight. Howard Hainzel, died at his home on October 28, 1989. His dedication and contribution to this great breed and breeders will be remembered with honor in the history of the APBT. See also, about creator Earl Tudor. My name is Rodolfo Luis, and I thank you all.